Hi guys and welcome to video number 16 in the But How Do It Know companion video series. Now in the last video we've added two registers R0 and R1 to our project board. And now we're starting to have a lot of possibilities when it comes to moving data around. So once we've input data in our system using our dip switch here, we can save it to R0, we can save it to R1, we can save it to any of our 256 RAM locations. We can also send it uh, to the ALU. That result will, can, can be sent to the accumulator. We can then enable the accumulator onto our bus to send that data somewhere else or enable any of these other sources uh, to uh, produce data. So we have a lot of possibilities that are building up. And all of these actions, setting something or enabling something, uh, can be done uh, using these control signals that we've set up at the bottom here. So what we're going to be looking for is a way to orchestrate these signals in order to make the machine do what we want it to do. And in a computer, the, the basic thing that you need in order to perform this orchestration is a clock. So if we pull up this diagram here from page 93, a clock is basically a pulse or a signal that alternates between 1 and 0 uh, at a specific frequency. And once you have that, then you can start regulating things and having them uh, occur uh, at certain uh, moments in these clock cycles. So as explained in the book, uh, the simplest way to create a clock is to take a NOT gate and send the output to the input. And that will basically effectively produce uh, a clock that would alternate between 1 and 0 uh, infinitely. So as explained in the book, uh, one of the problems with uh, doing this is that these uh, alternations between 0 and 1 will ha happen extremely uh, rapidly. And actually if you take, if you construct this uh, uh, circuit here and you put a LED to it, you will not be able to see it flicker because it's going to be alternating too quickly. Now in the book it's suggested that we use a long piece of wire to increase the delay and I don't think that that's really uh, feasible when we want to work on a project like we're doing. Uh, I don't know how long uh, a piece of wire it, it would take to uh, um, let's say bring that clock to have a frequency of a second or half a second it would probably be extremely long and I searched uh, for quite a while in a, in order to find a way to introduce uh, a delay in uh, this type of uh, circuit so that we can using the parts that we've uh, seen so far create a clock that has a frequency that we can observe uh, as humans so it turns out that you can build such a clock using something known as an RC circuit. So here's a diagram that I found of uh, a clock pulse generator uh, that's created uh, using an RC circuit. So to build this, you need two NOT gates. So uh, that's something that we've seen so far. You need a resistor and you also need something known as a capacitor. So a capacitor is uh, a bit like a battery, it can store uh, energy and uh, at some point it will release it uh, very quickly. And if you combine uh, those two NOT gates and your capacitor and your resistor uh, like shown here in this diagram, it will create a clock uh, that will have a pulse rate uh, that will be uh, in direct relation to the values that you choose for your resistor and for uh, your capacitor. Now it turns out that in my spare parts that I had, uh, I only had a 100 microfarad capacitor that came with my Arduino starter kit. So uh, you can see on the right here there is a formula that you can use to determine your pulse rate. So uh, using that, I figured that if I used a uh, 100 microfarad capacitor along with 
a 10k ohms res resistor I will get a clock that would have a pulse rate of around 0.7 Hertz so in the area of about a second or half a second in between that so that uh, would be a great starting point uh, to create a clock it's something that we can most certainly uh, distinguish if we hook up a LED to that we should be able to uh, see it very clearly so let's go and do that okay so I've connected our clock pulse generator here so we have uh, a first NOT gate here its output is connected to the input of a second NOT gate so that same connection here goes to our 10k ohms resistor which is connected back into the input of the first NOT gate at the output of the second NOT gate we have this orange wire here that's connected to our uh, 100 microfarad capacitor that's connected back to the input of uh, the first NOT gate and finally at the output of the last uh, NOT gate we have an LED here so if we plug this in, we should see the LED uh, flickering. And in fact, it seems to be working properly. We can see the LED pulsing. I would say it's pulsing uh, maybe once a second or uh, maybe a bit slower than that. So uh, it would make sense that it uh, has a frequency of 0.7 Hertz just like the formula had uh, given us. Now it's possible that these components are not really precise. They're, uh, I think, very cheap ones that come with uh, the Arduino uh, starter kit. But anyways, we have a clock here that's pulsing at a frequency that we can observe. So that's a very good starting point. So the next step that we need to take is to generate a second clock signal that in the book is called clock D which has to be uh, delayed a quarter of a cycle compared to this first clock. So let's see how we can do that. So if we look at this diagram from page 95 in the book, we see that what we're trying to achieve is to have a main clock signal, uh, in this case called clock, and a secondary signal called clock D, which is delayed by a quarter of a cycle with respect to the original one. Now in the book it is suggested that we use a long length of wire to achieve this delay. But as we saw before, uh, in practice this is not really feasible. So I went looking on uh, the internet if I could find uh, a circuit that could achieve this. And I stumbled upon this diagram here that says that there is a circuit that you can uh, make that given a clock at twice the desired frequency can produce two clocks uh, one that is the equivalent of our clock that we need and the second one uh, delayed by a quarter of a cycle so to produce this circuit uh, you need to do something like this so you feed your original uh, double frequency clock into two devices the first one receives the original clock and the second one receives the uh, inverse of the clock. And these two devices, these boxes that you see here, are called T flip-flops. And it turns out that to build a T flip-flop, it's something that's very doable using what we already know. So if we look at this diagram right here, we can see that the T flip-flop is really two one-bit memory uh, circuits connected together with some inverters so we should be able to do this using the parts that we already have so I'm gonna go try and build this now and I'll be right back okay so I made the test bench bigger by adding an extra breadboard and I moved our clock pulse generator from here to down here to have enough space to put the rest of the stuff beside it so uh, if we recall uh, this circuit here it's generating a clock pulse on this yellow wire here now on top I've made uh, an inverter so that the yellow wire will be clock and the green one will be not clock now to the right what we have is two T flip-flops both are constructed using two one-bit memory circuits uh, strung together and uh, both receive uh, different uh, permutation of not and not clock as uh, inputs and that's pretty much it 
So if we uh, turn this on, we should have our clock and clock D uh, lighting up properly here. And that seems to be the case. We have two pulses of a uh, clock here, followed by two pulses of zero, and the other one is delayed. Now we can see that this is quite slow because uh, we were supposed to have a double frequency here to get our single frequency here, and I have not done that yet. And this can be done by changing this 10K uh, resistor right here by a 4.7 uh, K uh, ohms resistor that I happen to have at hand. So let's turn the circuit off and swap it out. Okay, so now we can see that uh, the clock is alternating twice as fast. So uh, that's it. We have our clock and clock uh, D uh, right here. So the next thing that we need to do is to generate from those two signals our two main clock signals for the system, which are clock E and clock S. So what we're trying to do is have our clock E that's going to be on for three quarters of uh, a cycle and clock S that's going to be on just in the middle of that so the idea is you turn something on then you set whatever needs to be set and later you turn uh, your enabled item off and that repeats for every clock cycle so in the end it will give us a diagram like this where we will have our clock our clock D our clock E and our clock S and you can see uh, the relative timings of each of them. Now creating clock E and clock S out of clock and clock D is quite easy as shown in the book. Uh, you basically have to uh, OR clock and clock D together to create clock E and AND them together to create clock S. So uh, we're gonna go and add uh, this to our top here and this should give us our final clock that will be able to output clock, clock E, and clock S. Okay, so I added an OR chip uh, here and an AND chip here. I brought our clock signal uh, up here and our clock D signal, and uh, each of these uh, chips has one gate that is used, and uh, both have uh, clock and clock D as inputs. And uh, we have our clock E final signal that's going here, and our clock S um, signal that's going here. So this will give us our three uh, output clock, clock, clock E, and clock S. So that seems to be working perfectly. So we can see that this one is turned on uh, one quarter cycle before this one turns on and stays on and goes off one quarter cycle after. So moving on we're going to look at the next step in uh, the clock and orchestration circuit which is the stepper and the stepper is going to be uh, sourced using the clock signal right here. See you soon! <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.